So this woman has her own daughter kidnapped, hoping that she can collect some reward money. Now her name's Karen, and Karen lives with her boyfriend, this guy, Craig. But one day, Karen discovers that Craig has been secretly looking at some content on the internet that suggests that he might be a P3DO. And Karen is shocked and disgusted, and she's like, okay, I gotta leave this guy. But there's a problem. Karen can't just leave. She can't afford to support her family on her own. She's on welfare and she's got seven children. But then one day, all that changes. When Karen allegedly sees a news update and it's about a child who's gone missing in Portugal and they're offering a big reward for that child's return. And Karen has no idea where that kid is, but this gives her a crazy idea. And there she comes up with what I can only refer to as the worst plan ever. Karen plans to hide one of her kids, and then she's going to tell everyone the kid is missing. And then authorities or whoever will offer a big reward for her kid's return. And from there, she'll have someone pretend to find the kid and collect the reward money. And then she and that person will split that reward money. And once she gets that big reward money check, then she'll be able to afford to take all her children and leave Craig, the alleged P3DO. Like I said, worst plan ever. Regardless, Karen definitely needs help pulling off this scheme. So she reaches out to the shadiest guy she knows. This guy, who we'll call Uncle Mike. Because Uncle Mike just happens to be Craig's uncle. Anyway, she reaches out to Uncle Mike and explains her plan, and that she needs him to be the fake kidnapper. And Uncle Mike's like, right, I can do that. Then Karen chooses her most photogenic kid, her daughter, Shannon. Shannon is nine, so they're all set, and the next day, Karen and Uncle Mike set their plan into motion. So it's a normal day, and poor Shannon, she's walking home from school. And as she's walking, Uncle Mike, out of nowhere, just pulls up next to her in his car. And he gets out, and then BAM, he shoves Shannon in the car. And then he gets in, and he speeds away back to his apartment. And there is where he imprisons her. He sedates her so she won't make noise, and he tethers her to a beam in the ceiling with, like, a leash so that she can't leave the apartment. It's awful. Meanwhile, Karen calls police and reports Shannon missing. And pretty quickly, Everyone scrambles to find this nine-year-old girl. Police are looking, the whole neighborhood launches a full-on search, and they're canvassing her face on posters, banners, t-shirts. And this story is all over the news. And Karen, in all her audacity, goes on TV and pleads for Shannon to be found. Shannon, if you're out there, please, darling, come home. I love you so much, me and your dad and your brothers. And so weeks go by, and police still have no real leads. It's almost like Shannon just vanished into thin air. Until one day, Uncle Mike gets a call from one of his relatives who's like, Hey, I just got interviewed by the police about that missing kid. Did they call you? And Uncle Mike's like, No, and I'd like to keep it that way. And when relative hangs up, he's like, Well, that was strange. So he immediately calls the police and tells them about it. And police get suspicious. They want to talk to Uncle Mike. So they go to Uncle Mike's apartment and they knock on his door. But no one answers. But Uncle Mike's neighbors are like, He's definitely in there. And we've been hearing some strange noises from that fly, isn't it? So police are like, all right. And then boom, they just bust Uncle Mike's door down and they rush inside. And they search the whole apartment, but they don't find anything. Then they hear a little girl's voice. And it says, stop it, you're scaring me. So they follow the voice and they look in a hidden compartment under the bed. And there, finally, after being missing for 24 whole days, they find Shannon there, hidden with Uncle Mike. So they arrest Uncle Mike, here's his mugshot, and he totally just snitches on Karen. So then they go arrest her too, here's her mugshot. And then Uncle Mike blames Karen for all this, and Karen blames Uncle Mike for all this. Yeah, they both seem like really solid people. But anyway, both of them are sentenced to eight years in prison. Meanwhile, while police are searching Karen's apartment looking for evidence against her, they find images on Craig's computer that confirm that he's a P3DO. So they arrest him too, and here's his mugshot. Not a bad ending. And all this happened in West Yorkshire, England, so shout out to England. 